Hey, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, and this is kind of another Hunt Primitive Cave Talk. And today we're actually going to talk about the Florida Noonan Point, which is probably my favorite Florida point thus far. And uh, that's a middle archaic point about 3,000 to 7,000 years ago. This was used uh, on the end of an atlatl. And there's oh, lots of speculation as to how that these could have been hafted, but I've got a pretty interesting, it seems kind of like a common sense theory. Uh, on how they were used. And this is a piece of Florida native river cane. And it's just one of my normal atlatl spears. And at one point I just kind of had this great idea with these little tangs because very it's not very often that you see any sort of hafting uh, marks or grinding here, maybe once in a while, but it's, it's very, very rare. And one of the other things is, is the archeologists tell me, it's not necessarily my specialty, but uh, archaeologists that I talk to say that at uh, Noonan campsites they find a lot of the snapped off bases just the little square pieces laying around and that kind of tells me that they snap them off in the field and then they bring them back to camp and remove the pieces to put a new point in and that also tells me if they have quite a few of those that there wasn't really any hafting and so I kind of started thinking as to how I can implement uh, these points, why would we start having a tanged point, like even a, a, a slightly tapered tanged point, like a Noonan or even a Marion, uh, and not have any sort of hafting notches anywhere around? And because this is kind of a Florida, Georgia specific style of point, I started looking at some of the Georgia's, Florida specific, or even southeastern specific materials, river cane being one of them, and we've got some, some pretty good sized river cane. So what I ended up doing was I took a piece of this river cane, you'll be able to see here, it's actually flat. I heated it and squished it between two rocks, and if you work with river cane, you know that when you heat it, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit and it holds that shape. And so that's exactly what I did here. So I heated it and I squished it between two rocks and kind of worked a piece of rock in there to hollow it out. And by golly, if it didn't just fit a Noonan point just extremely well. So then of course I hafted below the point with sinew and I'll probably actually continue it down a little bit further to give it a little bit more reinforcement since this is an atletal dart or spear. Um, but what advantage this gives us uh, over, say, a, a point that's got, like a bowlin that's got notches in it that we can haft, or like a Dalton that's got an actual hafting area where this doesn't, is instead of implementing a four shaft system with this, we can inset it right into the end of the cane. And if we snap it off, or if we damage the point, or lose the point, we can bring it back to camp, heat it up, and it's held in with nothing but a pitch glue or a mastic and so all we do is come back to camp heat it up knock the broken piece out or it's already hollow it doesn't matter uh, put a little bit of new pitch on this and we can sit it right down in and put just a little bit of pitch right on the transition point to smooth it out and we're ready to hunt again and it's that simple and why this is important is so we don't have to wrap sinew, unwrap and wrap it again every time we want to replace a notched point. And where with four shaft technology, you can have a bunch of four shafts that you carry around and stick down in the end of a spear, but if you have this river cane, it's already naturally hollow. Uh, now all we have to do is kind of carry around some of these points and then we just kind of get around camp at night, whether you're on the move or back at, back at your home. Um, all you have to do is have a fire and you just kind of heat these up. Basically, you don't even heat over here, you heat the rock itself and the, the rock will melt the pitch back in here. The heat transfers through and then you just pop it out, pop a new one back in. So, uh, one of the things that I like about four shaft technology is I think that it, it's intentional to stop penetration so you can retain the point inside the animal. And one, another really important thing to mention is that these points are oftentimes really large. They're not always re really large, but a lot of them are very wide, and some of them are very bullnosed, and some of those may have also been used as socketed, uh, hafted knives. I, I really believe in that theory quite a bit. But I also believe that they're intentionally left a little bullnosed and wide so they don't 
completely over penetrate through the animal so when they go in maybe they don't come out the other side the pitch breaks loose or the, or the base snaps off the spear comes out so we can now reuse the spear but the point remains in the animal and it runs off and when they collect the animal or even if they don't recover the animal at least they still have the spear but if they recover the animal then they can also get the point back out afterwards uh, and I think that that may be one of the reasons that they are maybe a little exceptionally wide and tend to oftentimes be bullnosed. So, and then also remember, 3,000 to 7,000 years ago, the megafauna is gone. So this is not uh, something that they were using to hunt mammoths or mastodons with or giant sloths or anything like that. Like all that stuff is extinct at this point. The only animals that are really alive uh, in that time period uh, would have been white-tailed deer and black bear. Those are going to be your biggest ones, and then perhaps maybe some elk on the uh, on the northern parts of Florida yet. And I'm not exactly positive on it, but I'm pretty sure the bison at this time has actually uh, moved back, and they're completely out of the Florida Georgia area. I'm not completely positive, so don't quote me on that. But it kind of makes sense then that the points can afford to be much wider and uh, afford to be a little bit more bullnosed, especially if really you're hunting deer, if that's kind of your main staple at this time period in Florida, that you don't want to completely pass through the animal. I mean, you're probably not butthurt if, if you do pass through it because you killed the animal and that's fine, but you designed it to where maybe it stops in, a, in the animal about like this or, or like this, and then when it runs off, we can recover the point later. So I think it's a really interesting thought on these Noonan points. And of course, all of this is nothing more than speculation from a primitive hunter, which is myself. And, uh, you know, of course, I talked this over with Morgan Smith, my uh, archaeology anthropologist buddy. And he seems to like a lot of these ideas I come up with. And he says, yeah, let's run with that and see what, what, what we can do with it. So I'm going to mount this one up. I'm going to go ahead and put some pitch glue on it. And uh, next time I have kind of a pig hanging around, a medium-sized pig that, that's kind of a, a good comparison to a, a deer, we're going to throw it into it and just to kind of see how it does. Make sure we do get the penetration that we're looking for before we take this point out and hunt. And then hopefully this fall coming up, maybe we, we can work up a situation. Maybe we can get in a situation where we can actually legally hunt a deer with a Noonan point right here in Florida. So hang with us and uh, we'll catch you on the next adventure.